All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another Green Square Talks BattleBots podcast. So we are here with episode five, the review of that, where we'll go through all seven fights one by one, basically. So yeah, I am here with BBN podcast, Civilian Arc, Blaze Gaming, and Smurf, and technically the Doomba team as well. But the Doomba team was only here for the double tap Doomba fight because they're currently getting ready for Motorama in the upcoming days, along with doing a little bit of work on the up on the new version of Doomba, at least, since they are looking to apply and bring back Doomba for next season. So uh, that's basically going to be in a separate segment that is going to be edited in between the Fusion Witch Doctor discussion and the Riptide Mad Catter discussion. So it's going to look a little different because we recorded that on Zoom rather than Discord, but you get the idea. It was great having the Doomba team on, and yeah, so... You definitely check out all the co-host links right down below in the description, as well as Doomba, social media info, YouTube, merch site, all that fun stuff. But how's it going, all four of you? Yeah, I'm I doing like good. how you broke the fourth wall. Let's break the fourth wall, guys. Fourth, fourth wall. wall breaking speedrun. Yo. Oh. I don't even know what you're referring to, but uh, whatever. When you were, like, oh. telling the audience that, oh, it's going to be Maybe edited and be weird. Oh, yeah. Because it's on Zoom. Yeah, we're a little, di- little different since we recorded that bit on Zoom, but, yeah. It was fun having the Doomba team on regardless, so. Uh, I smell my my roommates making popcorn right now. Yeah. Popcorn sounds yeah, great right popcorn. now. But yeah, they're not BBB impact, unfortunately. What's the, what's the, what's the best drink what? to go with popcorn? What's the best what? Um, the best drink to go with popcorn. Great question. I, I, you want sort of like a, you either want something that's like more powerful of a flavor or like more mute of a flavor. So I would say either root beer, Coca Cola, or ginger ale. That is all big. I would support the first two. I'm not a ginger yeah, ale those, fan. Those that's just I love me. ginger ale. I know I have siblings who are a big fan of ginger ale, but yeah. Before or, or Dr. Pepper too. Oh, Dr. Pepper's Pepper a good choice too. But before we start talking about Minotaur free shipping, even though I know some of the, these guys are probably going to gasp about this, uh, basically there will be spoilers about this episode. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, uh, Unless if you want to hear us talk about the matchups and share lots of results of this stuff, I'd recommend watching the episode first or watching yeah, the fight somewhere else first. Your team, so. I didn't know there was going to be spoilers. Well, too bad, Blaze. Cry about it. Oh, so. no. Oh, no. I will cry about it. Anyway, let's go ahead and start talking about the first match of the episode. So now my boy Minotaur made its return to the arena after that dominant oh. victory over Tantrum. So you had off, and they're your child. Well, too bad. bad. I, I, it was one of the first robots I truly became a fan of. But yeah, it's taking on free shipping for this one, who had a relatively solid victory against Gigabyte, debuting the bird, their new spinning weapon, and for that fight, and brought it back for this one. And definitely, we got quite a showing from not just Minotaur, who ended up coming out on top in this fight, but we got some moments out of free shipping in this fight too. So, great to see both Leave both them. robots with some action. I'll uh, leave the floor to you three. What do you three got to discuss about this one? I'm going to be honest. I was worried that free shipping was going to win uh, the fight against Minotaur at, after seeing that first uh, first like minute or so with how with how that I'm 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 struggling to English guys. Forgive me, please. We'll, we'll forgive you. Okay, thank you. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that I thought that pre shipping was definitely doing a lot better in the first part of the fight rather than the latter half. Sure. Siv or BBBN? Uh, okay, so this fight was uh, this fight was a little silly. We we saw. We saw some free shipping shenanigans in Slew. Um, shenanigans? Shenanigans is right. Shenanigans is right. Minotaur decided to be a cool robot and beat up free shipping. Uh, 
This was kind of just like a fight that happened. Um, no way. Really That's crazy. Can you confirm that it happened? Uh, it's a. Uh, it, it was a good win for Minotaur, but like, yeah, this fight, this fight ha happened, I suppose. Gotcha. Uh, B, mm -hmm. yeah, you want to talk about it? It's your uh, turn. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, I mean, Minotaur, like, is, is always good and has been consistently one of the most good, like, one of the best robots in BattleBots. I wish, like, there was more damage. Like, it's like the pace that they were going at the beginning of the game, like the beginning of the match was get the wedgelet, get, start working on that tire. And then at the end of it, it was like, well, we got the wedgelet and the tire, that one tire was the only thing off. I don't know. I think I might've had a little bit of lofty expectations, but you, you have to commend, uh, Minotaur. It had a good fight against free shipping and likewise free shipping, free shipping had a solid, Solid fight. I think it probably did as best as it could, realistically, with uh, with how big of a name Minotaur is and how good of a robot Minotaur is. And yeah. it's continuing on the legacy of the live events where Minotaur and Freeship would fight a lot. So yeah, yeah, I was gonna bring that up that these two have fought in other competitions. I think Kratos said the last time they fought was two thousand seven. But um, yeah, I, I was predicting yeah, I this fight. Like, I, I was, since 2007. or yeah, oh okay, that's probably right actually. But regardless, though, I was yeah, I was betting this fight was going to happen eventually. A you know, driving war between two of the best drivers in BattleBots, and definitely we get a we get a pretty good showdown. I will admit though, my concern for free shipping ended up coming into place in this one. The big thing I was not impressed with the free shipping was that vertical spinner does not seem to do a lot of damage, though. Because, uh, no. because even though I think that's not really, like, the main purpose of it exactly, but, like, Minotaur, Minotaur's or his armor is mostly aluminum, and I think it'd be easier for free shipping to get through Minotaur's armor than Gigabyte stuff. And free shipping did get a couple of shots in, but... There wasn't a lot of damage done to Minotaur in that one. And like, of course, there might there might have been something we didn't see, of course, because yeah, but uh, yeah, the free shipping did get a couple shots in, but just didn't do very much to my liking, at I least. Think, I think it's uh, <coughs> partly because you know Gary Jins usually used all these like oh yeah control bots that so new to like the concept of like damaging. Yeah, because like the yeah. the point I was next gonna bring up is that like one it might be pretty much what civilian arc just said right there is Gary Jin. I think this is one this is one of if not the first times that he's used used a spinner in the arena. The other reason I was thinking of is maybe there are teething issues with the spinner. We've seen that that was a very common thing with rookie r robots this year. There are lots of them having teething problems with their weapon. Maybe that was going on with free shipping or something like that, but. Regardless, though, we got to, we got to see some some really good driving moments from Gary Jin, and he got a couple moments in on this one. But eventually, it was just the power Minotaur's drum spinner was just too much for free shipping. Got a wheel, busted both the wedgelets. Eventually, knocked off the vertical spinner, and I'm guessing free shipping got high centered on debris, based on what we were seeing right at the end there, because like it drove right into a short corner and then stopped driving. Thing, nice. when it turned. My guess is it probably got high centered on a broken piece of free shipping or something. Because I think there was moot there was signs of life from at least one of those three wheels left, but yeah, you kind of get the idea. It was a pretty good victory by Minotaur and free shipping it at least it, it did it did put up a pretty good fight against Minotaur, like BBM said. Well, now let's talk about their next opponents, unless if y'all have something else to say. Uh where free shipping is free shipping has Hydra for its next one, a rematch from from a couple seasons ago. Minotaur also is a rematch from the same exact season as free shipping and Hydra, a uh, rematch with Cobalt, which was one of my favorite fights of 2019. So, uh, what are our thoughts on those ones? So uh, this is this is one of the most. So I'll go with free shipping. This is one of the most unnecessary rematches of all time. Um, 
I do think for the most part, Hydra has a good, like, tough schedule for this season, which, you know, deserve it. But this is definitely the exception to that statement. Um, I don't really see anything free shipping can do. Um, I think Hydra is just going to flip free shipping around for, like, I, I, I'll i admit I don't think it's going to get a knockout in this situation because I don't really think, especially with, like, the new design of the arena it's going to be really hard to knock out free shipping but yeah i also don't really see much that because like i do think that if bots can get under hydra they have a good chance of damaging the underbelly and god knows what but you know as green said free shipping's weapon has like free shipping's weapon like so so far hasn't shown a ton which definitely does have some discredit to it so i'm gonna go hydra here it makes me wonder what sort of uh, wedge they bring, because they feel like the type of wedge they bring affects how well their their spinner is, because they feel like the spinner is more effective when the wedge is sort of riding up on something, or like the robot's riding up on something instead of just hitting it like directly on. So it makes me wonder what type of... This is more, that was more like, a, this was more like a, like a 2020 Rampage wedge than <laughs> anything else um yeah i don't, kind of I don't know if this i like that of, wedge specifically i don't i don't either it's kind of it looks kind of cursed but um, yeah i could see why they use that wedge cursed. at least for the minotaur because like i think they kind of use that thing to like fend off spinners drum spinners a little bit like minotaur kind of like add a little extra protection kind of like what endgame was going but, for but with their front attachment so... and to, yeah uh, as, as for the shock, as, as for Minotaur Cobalt, uh, Minotaur wins probably. That makes sense. I don't really see much Cobalt can do in that situation. All right, who wants to go next to talk about those two fights? Um, I got this. I can tell Smurf is building Hydra. I think free shipping loses to Hydra, sadly. Um, but. I think Cobalt is Cobalt Minotaur is a little more less cut and dry than what Civ is painting in this picture, because um, I think I mean when they fought, yes, Minotaur was definitely a lot better than Cobalt in twenty nineteen. Like what a what you're looking at twenty nineteen, but like Cobalt's gotten like leaps and bounds, like a lot better. I don't think it's as cut and dry. I think but you can also make that statement about close. Minotaur too. That is true. Also make that... that is true, but well, I'm gonna be a but, but Cobalt is my homie. So <laughs> um that is fair. I will it well, will be well, I mean, it'll it be closer. Here, here, I have a counter argument. Uh Matt Maxim isn't on Cobalt anymore. Well Dave Moulds is driving it. And Dave, Dave Moulds is a great driver. Driving. But Matt Maxim is based. I think David Moulds is based as Max Maxim. What? No. Anyways. But I, I think it'll be closer. Um, it'll. I think it'll be a, a answer of whoever's weapon dies first, or whoever has whoever's armor is more resilient. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, very that cool. is. Great observation. I guess it's my turn. Yeah. Uh, I think free shipping is going to beat Hydra because I think every robot's going to beat Hydra. Fair. Uh, Minotaur Cobalt. The reason why Minotaur beats Cobalt is because Cobalt lost to Mammoth and Minotaur <laughs> has not lost to Mammoth. So therefore, <laughs> Minotaur is better than Cobalt. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder how many times you're going to bring up Cobalt Mammoth from. Fantasy robot. Until the really. day at least it dies. Probably until the day that Cobalt and Mammoth fight. Probably until the day Cobalt and Mammoth fight for real. And if Cobalt and then, was to, if Cobalt yeah, was to, if Cobalt was to win it, then that would quiet Blaze down. No, I'll, no, I'll still bring it up. If, if, if Mammoth that to Moss to Cobalt using Mammoth. Wait. Wait. Oh, that's in, no, my English well. Yeah, I can also say that all your arguments are invalidated as Mammoth gets shit on by every single robot. <laughs> well, Rampage and, beat it. Rampage beat it. Yeah, but Rampage beat it. 
Does that mean that Rampage would beat Cobalt? It could. Yeah. If it drives it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, as for my takes on this, then uh, free shipping and Hydra, I have to go Hydra on that one. Like, Gary Jin would need to drive that fight perfectly in order to win that fight and just be absolutely, like, clear that flipper. Because there's no doubt if they go head on, in my opinion. I think Hydra wins the ground game pretty easily there and would likely toss free shipping around for a while until free shipping either gets stuck upside down or just loses drive. Like, I think odds are definitely in Hydra's favor of winning that fight. But I would love to see free shipping pull it off, though. Like, I think that would be... It'd be great to see. Because, like, the first time they fought, uh, free shipping, I felt, was initially winning that fight. Like, doing a great job avoiding the flipper... And getting getting some getting some decent control in the sides of Hydra. We could do something like that and incorporate the vertical spinner a little more or than what we were seeing in like the in either of these two fights. Maybe free shipping could pull it off, but as of right now I gotta say Hydra for that one. Minotaur Cobalt, I'm predicting that's the main event for that episode. I don't remember what fights are all what uh, what the other fights are in that one, but like that's a rematch of one heck of a fight that was in 2019. In several huge hits and just lots of damage caused by both robots. As for what I think, of course I'm going to predict Minotaur for that one. It's one of my favorite robots. Simp. and uh, Simp. Oh, Yeah, so. Uh, but basically how I see this one going down, it's either Minotaur is going to bend the wedgelets up on Cobalt, enabling them to be able to get underneath Cobalt easier and Cobalt not being able to get underneath it. Because the big concern for Minotaur, which this is probably Cobalt's big method of victory in this one, is that if Cobalt gets underneath, they could, they'll could they go right through that bottom piece or top piece or whatever it is. Like, Col like yeah, because I, I don't think Minotaur would be able to last a couple, of, a couple of huge hits from Cobalt. But I could be wrong about that pretty easily. Just, we know very well how devastating that weapon on Cobalt is, and I'm not sure how many shots Minotaur could survive from that thing on, the, like, their bomb or on their underside top or whatever. So. But if they go weapon on weapon, though, that's a little different, though, like what we were seeing many times in their first fight. I'm going Minotaur for that fight, but I definitely think that that one could... That, I definitely think that one could go either way, so... That'll be fun to see. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be great. By the way, it's episode seven. And episode seven. Oh, that's not far away. away. That's the episode after next after the next that's one. Like, so. That's in two weeks. And the yeah. only fight that really I could see being the main event in that episode, other than this, is uh, Bloodsport Gigabyte. But... I predict that's oh, gonna no, be the. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict that. So I'm gonna predict this season. They're not gonna yeah. give him. I'm predicting that's gonna be the lead off fight. But when Gigabyte oh is goodness, so bad, Gigabyte's gonna go on. When when Gigabyte's so bad, Mantine's fully admitting Gigabyte sucks. Then you know we're in for <laughs> a, a bad, a rough season. Well, anyway, unless if y'all have anything else to talk about with this one, we'll move on to fight number two. Let's go. I, I actually do. I actually do have. Some, what I you got? Have a question. Uh, how much did you pay to have them rig the fight for Minotaur to win? A uh, million dollars. Damn. Wow, you have that like, much yeah, money. Yeah, like you had that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. I, me, a college student who's currently on a co-op, definitely has a million dollars right now. So, and definitely yeah, use no, all, and definitely that. use yeah. all one million of that to rig BattleBots. Hopefully, you can see the sarcasm in that. No, 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 no. That's pretty believable. No, that's not sarcasm. Yeah. yeah, that's believable. No, that's facts. That's factual. Gotta, gotta love my sarcastic tone, okay. but let's move on to the next fight. Oh, yes, this one. Big shame that Pori's not here. His yeah, next fight, Claw, Claw Viper and Ribot. And this is one I was, this is probably the, this is probably the fight, this is probably the fight on the fight card that I was most excited for. Because, like, uh, ever since we saw Claw Viper's speedy performance against Ominous, that really got me excited for Claw Viper's fights with Ribot and Hypershock, who are, in my opinion, two of the other really fast robots. And so, and then these two fought in this one, and 
we got another beastly performance. And what do you got, Seb? Since I have the fun and based uh, information, I'll throw it in here first. So Go ahead. Claw Go ahead and talk Viper. about the fight. So, so, yeah, so this fight happens, and, you know, Claw Viper's a very speedy robot, and, you know, one of the hits, Claw Viper actually rams robot into the wall and damages the wall. Like, they have to fix the wall. Like, they got it, it was, like, stuck out of place or something. And it took them, like, 15 to 20 minutes to actually repair that thing. Like, Claw Vapor's drive is insane this season. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, any other thoughts on the fight, then? Or should we have to be um, in or Blaze? That was, that was a... I guess we're going to be in and Blaze. I found Yo, it right, hilarious. Yeah? I found it hilarious that the commentary was like, no one's gonna expect a uh, claw viper to be ribot, and uh, like I remember just conversations we would have like as a as a group, and we we're just like claw viper has a good chance of beating ribot. Like, I'm pretty sure the majority of us pick a ribot lot of us picked claw, claw viper to win this fight. Yeah, I, I think like, all but two or episode, three of us picked like, claw man. viper for my prediction game. Yeah, yeah. And, and like the the episode was like. If Claw Viper beats Ribbon, it would be an upset. We're, and then and I'm just sitting here, I'm just like, well, no, I don't think it would be. It would be. I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my hand in the ring here and say, uh, yeah, that kind of would be an upset just based on how both bots are perform. Yes, like a Claw Viper previously, against, but like obviously, yeah, like, obviously like isn't like shock after you see like the Claw Viper ominous fight, but like. Claw Viper just beat a bot that, you know, is very notorious for, like, being able to square up to lifter and control robots, and Claw Viper did that. Like, just and he took care of his robot. Like, like, I would call that an upset. Yeah. It was it was a great fight, though. Oh, yeah, it was a, it was it was a great thing. fight. Really great fight. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh... This gained a lot more confidence in Claw Viper, at least for myself, because like I, mm -hmm. I yeah, because like I wasn't sure how, because like even though we saw it dominate Ominous as much as it did, like I wouldn't consider Ominous a big name at least yet. Ribot is definitely a big name. It was going to be a great test for Claw Viper, and just seeing it body Ribot as well as it did in this fight, that was absolutely incredible to see and. Claw Viper, I think, proved right there that it that this is a this is a robot to really watch out for. Like, I think it I is. think I think David I, Jin did I, do a really good job driving in this fight. Hey, like even with losing drive on one side, because I think he did do a pretty good job of staying squared up to Claw Viper for the most part. But just uh, but just keeping up with Claw Vipers was just so it's just so tricky. And, like, for the most part, he did do a great job at it. And we did get to see quite a few good hits from the vertical spinner. Kind of like the other thing I thought of, at least, when I, after I watched this fight. Or, but uh, I was surprised Ribot didn't go with the undercutter for this fight, personally. Because, I, cause like, I feel if you want to keep up with Claw Viper a little bit, you want the extra control. And Ribot seems to drive better with the undercutter right there. So, a question I'm going to ask right here before we start talking about their next opponents or whatever else you guys have to talk about is, do you think the fight outcome could have changed if Ribot went with the undercutter for this one? Uh, maybe? Uh, I think the outcome changes and that the arena, the arena is even more damaged. That's after true. That <laughs> uh, I think Claw true. Viper takes more damage as well. I think Claw Viper takes more damage than it did. Claw Viper definitely uh, like it takes still took out a decent than... amount of like, it still took a decent yeah. amount of damage, but, like, I think it would have taken more, a lot more damage if they went with the horizontal, but I don't think the actual I think I'm uh, win from changes. Some, I think I'm suffering from some Mandela effect uh, this fight, because I, I could have sworn I thought Ribot got KO'd here, but I guess I was wrong. Well, they were crab walking for quite a bit of the fights, but, uh, yeah, at least on TV it went to the judges, well, and, but... I mean, and, well, and, and, like, it, I mean, like, it, 
the it appears different live than compared to uh, TV as well. So yeah, for instance, yeah, uh, blacksmith versus Minotaur, round one. Well, anyway, so uh, yeah, my take on that, I probably would still have the outcome as the same, but I think definitely like some of some of these people have said that I think Ribot could definitely have done a little more damage. It's possibly and might have had an easier time like keeping up with Claw Viper's speed with that configuration, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's possible Ribot went with the vertical spinner configuration. The two things I can think of is like as we saw right there, if they went head on, Claw Viper would probably have a Claw Viper would have a harder time grabbing them if they used the vertical spinner configuration, and the possibility of scooping up Claw Viper with the wedgelets and hitting them like that is greater with the vertical spinner. But then, it's also possible, because we know that they were having issues with the Undercutter prior to the Witch Doctor fight, which forced them to go with the Vertical Spinner for that fight. They might have still been having problems with the Undercutter or something. I don't know what the reason is. I don't think they confirmed it, at least as of when we're recording this. But uh, you kind of get the idea, so. Like... I think it was I, like I'm not criticizing the robot team at all. I think the vertical spinner was a fine option to go with here because I personally felt there are cases where the vertical spinner would be better, other cases where the undercutter would be better. So like, I think either one would have been fine for this battle. So, but um, can I can I, can I give my input about this fight now? Yeah. No. Go for all it. All right. So I personally think that uh, I thought. I should have gone with the horizontal here. I wonder if they, because I know in their first fight they had they had like issues with yep, the horizontal. As I said. Yeah, I wonder if that's what happened in this fight. Yep. I, I, I don't I, I don't know if that's the case, would, but that's my that could. I, uh, hey, who knows? I think you know. I I, I don't I don't I kind of don't remember what he said, so I'm not gonna say it and like I'm talking out of my ass because uh, but I know David Jin did mention why he did that in his like interview of the fight and like during like the live scene I don't remember what it was but I might be wrong there's something along the lines of we wanted to be impressive to the selection committee so we wanted to show we wanted to have more confidence in our vert uh. that's just what I that's just what I remember and don't take my word for that um that wouldn't surprise me, because, like, most of their impressive victories have come from using the horizontal spinner, and the vertical spinner could be very key, because, like, I feel most of the competitive field, like, the vertical spinner would probably be their weapon of usage, so it's possible they want to use it in, like, in a situation like this to, like, test out some things with it and make sure, like, it's a little more reliable, if that makes any sense. So, like, reliable. that is about, that is... I would. I don't think reliable is the right word consistent. that I'm going for. Consistent. But, uh, yeah, consistent is probably better. Consistent is a much better word. Yeah. But regardless of what Civ reliable. said, what Civ said, I think definitely is a possibility. I think it's a very valid point. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's talk about their next yeah. opponents. Claw Viper has a control battle with Overhaul coming. Ribot, we got a. We get a Corey versus Green Square showdown because they're taking on Jackpot, another one of my favorites for uh, their next fight. So, what are our thoughts on that matchup? On those matchups? Um, all right. Well, Claw Viper is going three and L. Um. Then what about Jackpot? Uh, that that could eat, that could very well go either way. With, but I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna lean towards a Jackpot. Just because of how Ribot been, we've seen two of Ribot's fights. We've only seen one of Jackpot's fights. So, like, I think next, yeah, next episode we get to see their second fight. So, uh, their second fight rotator, is, uh, rotator. Oh no! Oh no! Well, Jackpot's gonna hopefully beat Rotator. <laughs> um. Uh. Just because I know Stealth really likes the new Jackpot design, I'm going to lean towards Jackpot. Absolutely. So, so you're simping. I'm being, I'm, 
I'm hey, he's my best friend, man. I can't not. Hey, you simp for your best friend. I mean, it's it's, it's cool. It's that, what it is. That's pretty, pretty sus. <laughs> you're, you're pretty sus. Well, BBN and Seb, uh, what do you two got to talk about those matchups? So, uh, first fight, uh, first fight, uh, Ribot versus Jackpot. Uh, I think it comes down to what Jackpot tries to do to counter Ribot, because, you know, you see all these designs made specifically because they have no idea what Ribot's going to use, so they come in with these, like, vertical... Co- vertical uh, counter, horizontal counter hybrids, like what Uppercut used in its fight against Robot in 2020, what Endgame used in the Golden Bolt bracket. I'm not sure what really Jackpot has for that. Now, I could be I could be shocked and they do have some kind of like Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone type bullshit with them. But uh, I think Robot is just more unpredictable. And I'm not sure if Jackpot has a plan for that. Again, could be wrong, but I think I'm going to go for Ribot here. Uh, Claw Viper Overhaul, um, I mean, I do think Overhaul has definitely improved from past years, but Claw Viper's just improved so much more, and it's much faster. It has a better chance of getting a bite. Kevin's driving is better. It's just like, it's like, Every category that a control bot needs to beat another control bot, Claw Viper has over overall. I'm going Claw Viper there. Absolutely. Uh, BBN, you want to talk about it? Um, okay, Claw Viper and Overhaul. I will say that... I will say that every single... Um, I mean, it's very similar to Civ. Claw Viper to me, as we sit currently, is the the blueprint for how you make a control bot. It might be the... I think it is the best control bot that we like. We are seeing in the current game. That's very easy to say. Yeah. Very easy to claim. Um, an overhaul is one of the most mid of of this and of the of the modern game. So... You just look at it on paper and you go, yeah, Claw Viper wins it. And then you look at their fights and then you go, oh, Claw, Claw Viper is definitely going to win it. So I have Claw Viper winning that pretty pretty easy. I would be shocked if Overhaul beat Claw Viper. But as it stands right now, Claw Viper will beat Overhaul. Uh, Jackpot Ribot, I think, is going to be interesting. I don't want to claim... Uh, claim anything of who would win and who would lose until I see Jackpot Rotator. Because if we're being all in all honesty, Jackpot didn't look good against Warpios at all. Like, it didn't even look. Like, we didn't get to see it. It just got knocked out immediately and that was it. So we need to see how it... I, I want to see how it performs against Rotator before we can actually call the, the Rivot fight uh, that fight in the future. Absolutely. So, as for my takes on this, uh, Claw Viper and Overhaul, like, both those robots are quite improved and have had some, so- and have had at least one solid victory so far. It's Overhaul's only had one fight so far. Claw Viper's had two. But, yeah, they both, these are two very similar robots. They got two very effective lip- lifters, and they've shown capabilities. They could grapple opponents, and so far, and they both have great drivers, and but I think the one difference, which is why I'm going Claw Viper, is Claw Viper's speed right there. I imagine Overhaul is probably going to have a hard time keeping up with Claw Viper on this one. And that's probably what I'm going for for this one. And that's not why I'm going to be predicting Claw Viper for this fight. Claw Viper has definitely been skyrocketing on my list for who I think could be Dark Horse for this season. Because... Seeing Claw Viper shake off Ribot and dominate the fight as much as they did in this one was phenomenal to see. As for Ribot Jackpot, Ribot's definitely going to be coming out swinging in this fight because they're kind of in a hole right now, and I think that Jackpot fight is going to be a must-win. It could be a must-win for Jackpot as well because they have their next fight coming in the next episode with Rotator. If they lose that fight, they're also going to be 0-2. 
for this one. I think it's going to depend on what Ribot goes with for this fight, and I'm going to predict they're going to go with the undercutter for that fight, if that is an option for this one, or if they want to do more with the vertical spinner for this fight. Because, like, Scorpio's talked about this a lot within their videos, at least recapping or pre-fight with, with, with Jackpot right there, talking about how they were worried about the reach Jackpot spinners right there, possibly clipping something. And that's my concern if Ribot goes with the vertical spinner right there and wedgelets, because I think Jackpot will be able to pluck those off. So I think the undercutter would be a wise choice for Ribot. But as for that, I'm going Jackpot on that one, because uh, I, th I think vertical spinners, Ribot seems to be having a hard time with, especially the reach game, too. And Jackpot has... De definitely doesn't have the power levels as Witch Doctor does, vertical spinner-wise, but I think we're going to see some huge hits land landed from Jackpot on that one. Possibly some huge hits from Ribot as well, because Ribot's also capable of delivering some big shots, too. So, but that'll be a good fight. Both of them will be a good fight. I'm looking forward to both of those, so. Anything else, or should we get to fight number three? Okay. So, Lockjaw and Sawblades, a battle between two big names, one that some could arguably say on paper should have been the main event for this one, since Sawblades and Lockjaw have both been involved in this both have been involved in the sport for a long time, and like Sawblades has been a big name for the past few seasons. Lockjaw's technically have been a big name too, who but like Donald Hudson's a legend. So uh but yeah, we got a pretty interesting showdown here. Lockjaw or Sawblaze came in with a new fork setup for this fight, they, thinking that possibly Lockjaw could outwedge Sawblaze. So they went with a new fork design that supposedly is even lower, apparently. Lockjaw came with no forks. Not sure if that's because they needed the weight for extra top armor, like what Chris and Kenny said, I believe. Or if they wanted or if they were possibly just gonna or if they were possibly just going to play the reach game this time. Because, like, it's very hard to get underneath saw blades. So maybe playing the reach game would not be a bad decision here. Regardless, though, Lockjaw had no forks for this fight. And it could I feel like it could be either one of those choices. And, Siv, I'll let you talk about this one, since I know you just had something right there. And, Ben, you probably have something else you're going to want to say. So, please that you mentioned to us earlier. So... So I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think it was like, oh, uh, yeah, that could make for extra top armor, and oh yeah, yeah, the, the more reach is another good like have a reason to ditch the force here. I think uh, I think Lockjaw's strategy was I understand understood why they did it because I don't think. Lockjaw is getting under Sawblaze anyway, so why bother? Um, I think I, I I understand why Lockjaw did that, but uh, yeah. But this is also another fight where surprise, surprise, the arena was damaged. The freaking Sawblaze, and you can see in that picture that um, the screws that Lockjaw and Sawblaze are right at. Sawblaze damage. Uh, the screws, or Lockjaw and Sawblaze damaged the screws, the point where they were stuck and they had to, like, fix it. So, yeah, Sawblaze's drive is insane, Claw Viper's drive is insane, everyone's drive is just insane. Absolutely. Uh, Blaze, BBN, you two want to talk about the site? While I pull up so the uh -huh. Sawblaze um, recap. Yeah, I got it. I'll get this. Um, You also have to I also agree with like Lockjaw with their decision for what they did, getting top armor and trying to get reach. When you look historically, some of uh, uh, Sawblaze's big losses were against robots that didn't have ground game but had a very strong vert. You know, uh, Witch Doctor comes to mind like primarily, but also Monsoon from season three. Granted, that's a long time ago. The like, but Roughly. those were two robots that didn't really have wedges or ground game, like a ton of it. But they had, um, they had reach, and they were able to get to the sides, and they were able to do a lot of damage to 
to uh, Saw Blaze. And, yeah. I mean, we saw Lockjaw take out the the flamethrower. Like, that was some good damage that Lockjaw was able to do. And I feel like if they would have been able to keep on doing that, there would have been a closer match. Um, but Lockjaw's weapon isn't on par with Witch Doctor's weapon. Like, we haven't seen those big hits that, like, we see from Witch Doctor. So while I agree with it, I... I still think that it was the outcome that I still ended up expecting. What you got, boys? Uh, all right. So my favorite hit of the episode happened in this fight, and that was when Sawblaze hit the Lockjaw's mini bot. Like, because I found that very funny that more mini bot abuse happened in this episode. And also, Lockjaw's mini bot happened again. Wow. Yeah. So. Second time ever that they brought a mini bot. Good job. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so as for my takes on this, before I start talking about a little bit about the damage report that Sawblaze posted on Facebook earlier, probably on Instagram as well. Uh, yeah, the outcome. The outcome. Like I thought. I thought Sawblaze was going to win this fight, but. Uh, I thought Lockjaw was going to have some good moments, which it did have in this one. But Sawblaze is a little bit concerning in this one. But fortunately, it doesn't sound like it's going to be much of a worry based off the damage report. Because, like, after, like, a couple of shots Sawblaze landed, like, both the spinner stopped functioning. And the arm was in the downwards position. And we saw the arm get put back in the outer position, as you can see in the image right there. But the saw wasn't spinning for the rest of the fight right there. I was wondering what was going on there, whether Lockjaw damaged something important that rendered that stuff useless or not. But sure enough, that didn't seem to be the case right there. It sounded like a technical issue with some of the safety features, actually, in Sawblaze, from the sounds of it. Because they, they posted a damage report where basically that big hit that caused their arm to be in forward position and the saw to uh, be shut down for the rest of the fight, basically. Basically, their weapon receiver dropped out, and where they lost control of it for a little bit while, for a little while, and it had to reboot basically. And once it got once it got rebooted, basically they were able to get the get the spinner going once again, which apparently didn't happen because Lockjaw eventually got put back up. Where it sounds like the, where, based on the report, they actually only had one working wheel left as for Lockjaw, so. I think the outcome definitely would have been the same, even if Lockjaw didn't get stuck there, basically. Uh, hopefully that was a reasonable summary of their damage report, but if there was something that wasn't clear, just check out Instagram or Facebook to uh, check out their damage report, because they it's very detailed and almost certainly easier to understand than listening to me talk about it. So, uh, yeah, anything else about this one, or should we talk about their next matchups? Okay, next matchups. Lockjaw takes on Glitch for their next fight, and Sawblaze takes on Scorpios in a matchup that I know many fans have been wanting for a while. So uh, gonna let's talk fight. about let's talk about those uh, matchups. Sid is okay. gonna love the Sawblaze Scorpios fight. Oh yeah, you definitely will. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy it, aren't you? Aren't you gonna enjoy it, man? Aren't you gonna it's enjoy gonna be it? Brother, so uh, brother, brother, if that if that becomes the main event, I'll uh just stop. I probably will, honestly. I'll stop. I could see it being the main event, but we'll just because it is a matchup that know. fans have been wanting for a while, but I think it'll depend on the quality well, of the fight ended up having. Fight, I think this, game this, this fight's gonna fucking suck. It is. This that fight's is gonna so fucking suck. Cool. Hammer saws suck. Scorpio Sawblaze sucks. Scorpius is cool, I guess. Uh again, if Shatter becomes a hammer saw I'll quit battle buffs. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, but no, uh I, I think that Sawblaze versus Scorpios is just gonna be a bad matchup because both robots aren't designed to fight each other. I'd say, I'd, say, I'd say I'd say Sawblaze is designed to fight Scorpios. Sawblaze is more prepared to fight no. Scorpios than Scorpios is prepared to fight Sawblaze. Uh, the problem. Here's the, like, here's they're the not problem. the ideal. Like, they're not what they're made well, for. Well, hold on, hold on now. Um, they're the, not the made thing is, to fight 
Brother, and they're not, the th not going to be a good fight. But anyway, the, thing so is, gonna be isn't the thing is, Sawblaze isn't equipped to fight Scorpios. It's just that Sawblaze is larger and more, like, not, exactly. like, better driven, but, like, the drive is more powerful. Like, rip, what, what are the bots that Scorpio says completely manhandle? Orby Blade, um... Tombstone. Yeah. Tombs well, I mean, Tombstone was, like, that was, like, half-drive Tombstone. Oh, yeah. Let's so. Yeah. Um, How about y'all talk about these two uh, fights? Watch, watch versus, uh, Glitch. I oh, this think one, this this one's easy. I think that's one hundred percent. Well, no, it's, well, no, but um, Lockjaw versus Glitch is definitely gonna be an interesting matchup, and I think it's all gonna come down to if Glitch and if Glitch fixes their issues from the Riptide fight, which I think they will, and I think Lockjaw will uh. We'll do, uh, what, what's the famous thing Mantine says? Uh, what's the theory of the end? Kill yourself on Glitch? Yeah. Kill yourself, kill yourself on Glitch. Watch gonna do. Yeah, yeah kill and then yourself on Glitch. is gonna beat Scorpios because Sawblaze is bigger, uh, bigger, it has better ground game, and a better weapon. BBN, what do you got? Um, great question. I think... Lockjaw is going to to win, and Glitch is going to do Glitch things and be Glitch and die immediately. Um, that that one's a pretty easy one. I think Sawblaze and Scorpios is going to be fun regardless of what happens, regardless of what Civ thinks about that fight in general. I love Hammer Saws. Hammer Saws are fun, but... Uh, because they're they're tactical, but also can be deadly. So I, I enjoy that very much. I think I'll have to put Sawblaze uh, on for the win column there, though this fight does raise a little bit of concerns because of what happened at the end with their spinner and their and their uh, hammer part. Yeah, you know. So my takes on this lockjaw and glitch that's going to come down to driving right there. Is like Glitch's drive didn't look the best against Riptide, and hopefully they get that fixed. But we're not going to see another Glitch fight until this happens, because this fight is on ep this fight happens episode nine, which and that's Glitch's second fight. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of all we have to really look upon for as for predicting this fight as for Glitch. So, uh, but. I'm picking Lockjaw for this fight because, as of now, Lockjaw's drive has been pretty good. I think Donald Hudson definitely has the driving ability to try to outmaneuver Glitch if it does start if it does have drive problems like what we've seen in the past with Glitch. So that's my bet. But if but if Glitch gets their drive working and they go head on with each other a bunch, I think Glitch probably wins those exchanges. But hopefully, we get a good fight out of that. Sawblaze Scorpios like that. That is a fight I have been wanting for a while because, like, those are t those are kind of like the those are kind of like the two big saw robots from from seasons past, along with like Red Devil. But I have to go with Sawblaze with this one because I think they have a huge design advantage in this one. Like I, because like I think the some of the only ways that Scorpios wins this fight. Which I could be wrong about this too, because like th there is another Scorpios fight coming. Because like next episode they actually fight Big Dill, so but uh, I I think the only way is Scorpios probably wins this one Basic. is the only I think the only way Scorpios wins against Sawblaze is if Zach can outdrive Games and go get to the side to the backside, which I think will be very hard because like while Zach Lyle is a great driver, James Jamo is also a great driver. So, and he will not make that easy. Scorpios would probably need to win the ground game against Sawblaze if they want to go head on. And Sawblaze is one of the best robots when it comes to winning the ground game. And th that'll be a hard opponent for yeah. Scorpios. So I have to go with Sawblaze. Yeah. Anything else? Or should we get to the next fight then? Yeah, this fight. So huge and blip. Huge and blip. So, uh, this one, 
configuration wise, this was not what I was expecting. So I was expecting something big from Blip, at least for this one. I wasn't exactly expecting like a bike rack or a unicorn horn or something, but yeah. Blip came in with a looks like a bunch of extra armor for this fight to protect themselves from Huge's spinner. And they were hoping to uh, take a couple hits and then get the flipper underneath the wheel and use use those fork attachments that they used for this one to scoop up and grab a hold of the wheels of huge in order to get underneath them and start using that flipper. We got to see some great action from Blip's, Blip's flipper in that one, but we got a little more from Huge's spinner, including an unstick in this one. So, but what's everyone's thoughts on this fight, then? We got definitely one of the funniest uh, one-liners in BattleBots in this fight. Yeah, the this whole, one uh, stop was... running away and then stop chasing. <laughs> that was a funny, funny moment. And, uh, yeah. personally, yeah. I will uh, say, I'm... bruh. What do you got, please? Uh, like, I can see why Huge won the decision. I just personally disagree, because I thought Blip did more than Huge. Oh, but... it, was one, it was one of those things where, like, you felt coming out of the fight that Blip won that fight, but then you think based yep. off of, like, the judging system that Huge won it. Or yeah, something like that. I, 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 gotcha. I was talking about four. Judging. I don't know. Um, yeah, what do you got, Sev? Well, my opinion is uh, Blip sucks, so that's my first opinion. <laughs> wow. Uh, my second well, opinion I'm is... Disappoint. I'm going uh, disappointed in you again. I don't care. Uh, my second opinion is, uh, yeah, this was a good showing by Huge. Huge's is, Huge is, Huge is really improved this season, and, you know, it's really happy to see because this thing's been around since, like, BattleBots has been brought back, so it's kind of like... I think it's the first rookie we saw in the BattleBots Discovery season, if I'm remembering it right. Uh, better, yeah. better, I I think so. Yeah, I think so. It was free yeah, shipping yeah, duck and huge. It was it was either no no it was no it was, no, it, no, it was free shipping duck and uh it was it, it was either the it was either the rumble between was, duck free shipping and mecha rampage it was rumble, or it was, rumble, was huge or sub zero. I don't remember which fight came first, but you, it, it, it was, was regardless regardless it was in the first still, episode of Discovery stands. era. So yes, my point still kind of stands. Yes. So, um, uh, you know, it's kind of good to see Huge be doing good again. Uh, so, yeah, this was, this was a good fight to see Huge do. And, yeah. It's like, it's, it's kind of, it feels like a rite of passage that every flipper must fight Huge at some point. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, what so, do you got, BBN? So Sub-Zero still needs to fight Huge then. Well, it's like it had to, to be Banshee. This. Yeah, Sub Zero right, did fight you're huge. Right. Yeah, it it's Lucky. Lucky, Lucky or Banshee. Fight huge? Lucky is not, as no, of my Lucky knowledge. And, Lucky, 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 Lucky and, and Banshee Lucky's, need to fight huge, guys. Lucky, Lucky has fought in huge in BattleBots War Machines. Though. That's true, it has. That is true. Okay, so it's just Banshee then. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay, back to the actual fight. Um. I think this is just plain and simple. I think, I th I just think uh, huge did more damage, and that's what got it the win. You you can't really discredit the fact that, like that their win was bad. It was not a bad win whatsoever. It got so many shots off. Um, Flip's top armor. They brought the top armor, and the top armor helped a little bit, but not not enough. Um, I think I said in my podcast that if this fight went to if this fight ended when they got stuck, I think Blip wins the fight. But as soon as they got unstuck and the weapon got broke, because it was almost inevitable, if they got unstuck, like, there's no way Blip's flipper actually was going to be able to work after that. So Blip would have to, like, control the fight perfectly and allow no shots to come onto them in order to win that fight. And... When you're trying to push around a really, like, giant and, like, oblong object that is very, while easy control, while easy to control, 
is very hard to keep in control, you're just still able to get shots off. I feel like if it was only able to get one or two shots off, it still would have won the match, but you just kept on bringing the pain to to you to blip and i'm not surprised by the result whatsoever yeah yeah i also agree with the judge's decision i did think blip won aggression and control categories but i think the mad damage huge did especially as jonathan schultz mentioned during the interview that he started spinning the weapon downwards around when the unstick happened and that's where a lot of the damage seemed to be happening right there not sure if there was that hit that got well. that got those two stuck, or if maybe it was the unstick or something like that. But uh, that might, I'm curious when and when and ha- when Blip's flipper went down officially. But regardless, I give Aaron Hill a lot of credit. It's like Blip really held its own in this fight, and that was a, that, that was well. yeah, that was not at all a bad loss from Blip. One bet, like. Yeah, even though Blip is in a hole right now with two losses, uh, it held its own quite well in this fight, and it should be exciting to see what Blip can do going forward. But yeah, it's, it's phenomenal performance and huge once again, two and zero, and yeah, one of the best starts for Huge so far. I think it's their best start since twenty eighteen, where they started up where they went three and one in the qualifiers. But yeah. Let's talk about their next fights, where Huge is going to take on Fusion, and Blip has Blip has a showdown with the other seems reasonable oh. robotics uh, team, Tantrum, the defending champ. So, what are our thoughts oh, on those God. two matchups? I feel bad for Summer. I feel bad for Summer. I don't feel bad for Blip. <laughs> Damn. I mean, Blip, Tantrum... I think, honestly, I think Blip could beat Tantrum. Because I I just don't know who is the better driver between Aaron and uh, Dylan, if I recall correctly. Well, I do think Tantrum, Blip has probably the better driver, but it's not by a a wide margin by any means. Oh, yeah, what's that? No, it would be close. I think the important part point is that uh, most of the ground game that Blip has, Blip hasn't really proven itself ground game worthy, in my opinion. I think like its most impressive ground game feat is a uh, jackpot, and uh, yeah, it's just I don't think Blip's that like, good in the ground game yet. Couple that with the fact that at times Blip can pop, pop itself up in gyro at times. I think it's gonna. I think if that happens once, it's game over. Whereas, tantrum, I think tantrum can recover through some blip attacks. I don't really think blip can recover through tantrum's attacks. So, I'm gonna go tantrum here because I think tantrum can survive more of the punishment than blip can. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I disagree with the whole. It being one hit from Tantrum and Blip being dead. Blip being done, but like... Blip, but I do think I could easily go either way. And uh, Fusion's going to beat Huge. Because it would be funny. Fair. BBN, what do um, you got? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I feel like both of these matchups, when you look at both of them, are a toss-up. Yes. Uh, okay. Huge hasn't had the best track re- record against son of, uh against Waiachi team robots. Um, season four, it died to son of Waiachi because it son of Waiachi teared its wheel apart, and then it lost to to Hydra in season five. And we don't talk about that fight for obvious reasons. But it hasn't what? had the best. It doesn't. It hasn't had the best sort of. Luck, but I think this is the best shot at winning. You have to look. I mean, Fusion's horizontal spinner is terrifying, but Fusion is also known for for uh, burning up and getting on fire. I think if they're able, if a uh, huge is able to, I think they're gonna like spin their weapon down so they can get shots on the top armor. And maybe cause a battery fire, 
that might be where they win it. Um, but it's it's too hard to say. I would probably lead with Huge in this fight because uh, also another thing, Fusion isn't the most isn't the most mobile robot, and I think F uh, Huge might have the opportunity to maneuver it. When it comes to Tantrum and Blip, this would be very sad if the fight was um, against two O and two robots and basically losing. If one of them loses, is a death knell for them making the postseason. But both of these robots are built decently well. I mean, both times Blip like this season Blip got like its shit kicked in and was still able to go to the to the judges so I don't think it's the tantrum gets one hit and it's done but I also don't think if Blip gets one flip it's done I think this will be be a great match and I hope for God that tantrum wins against Hydra just so like just so if Blip wins, both could still have a chance of going 2-2 two and two and making the playoffs. Because I like both Blip and Tantrum, and I want to see sad. them succeed. And it would be really sad if if Tantrum had a terrible regular season and didn't make the postseason and wouldn't even have a shot at trying to defend its title. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, my takes on this... Does have one of the hardest. Yeah, uh, Tantrum does have one of the hardest strength of schedules out of any robot. Right, but I if mean, it didn't, if it doesn't win against any of those robots, I don't think it gets in it's, off of strength of schedule yeah, alone. Completely fair. I, I mean, mean, Hydra got really a hope that Tantrum beats Hydra. Well, anyway, as for my takes on this, uh, like BBN said, both of these are toss-ups in my opinion. I think they both could go either way. Start with Blip and Tantrum. It's really hard to say this because Tantrum Tantrum does fight in the next episode. That both these robots could be coming in at episode eight, probably the main event at O and two, right there. Like that's something that I would not. Be, I was tell I was I mentioned in the last podcast, the last episode review podcast. It was surprising to me a little bit to see Whiplash at O and two, even though both their opponents were tough ones. Uh, It'd be, it's a little bit surprising for Blip and could be surprising for Tantrum as well if Hydra wins that fight. But that fight's coming next episode. And I hope we get a good fight out of it. I hope we got the first time. Not going to talk much about the decision or anything. I'm going to hold my comments on that. I don't. I feel there's no need to talk about it. But as for this fight, uh, I'm going to lean towards Blip on this fight right there. Well, shut up, Sid. But... <laughs> Like, I think Tantrum's definitely more capable of doing damage here, but I think this one's going to be a judge's decision, unless if one of these two robots gets stuck or out of the arena or something like that. Because both these robot, both of those two robots definitely have the durability to take hits or flips from the other robots. And so I think this will be a three-minute, hopefully really back-and-forth fight right there. But I like Blip on this one just because we... But because I feel as of right now, it's the safer pick. Because Tantrum did not look so hot in that first fight with Minotaur. Hopefully, it looks better in that fight with Hydra, and we will find that we'll find out in the next episode. Tantrum oh, had uh, a pretty good start on Minotaur. It had a good start, but like the Self Rider didn't look that good, at least in that one. And they're gonna need it for this well, fight, didn't... but. Didn't Minotaur didn't Minotaur damage that self rider? Yeah, ba basically Minotaur got an initial flip, and then Blip was or Tantrum was trying to self right before Minotaur hit it again and broke that piece of the self right that you're talking about right there. And it looked like even with that, it was still struggling to self right. I could be wrong about that because like there was a quick like one second in between that, but like those are just some of my at least observations or theories that I was looking at right down there, but. Uh, Regardless, as as of right now, I'm picking Blip for that fight, but I imagine Tantrum is going to be coming out swinging in that Hydra fight in the next episode, and just to try to rebound from that loss to Minotaur. And definitely, if Tantrum performs, hey. well, de definitely if Tantrum wins that fight with Hydra, 
you could see me when we bring that that fight back up for the next episode review. You could see me switching over to to Team Tantrum as for that fight. Now, Huge Infusion, that's also a toss-up, and I think that fight's going to end quickly, too. I see Fusion leading with the horizontal spinner and trying to slice up the wheels, similar to like what other horizontal spinners have done, because I don't think there's really much that vertical spinner will be able to do for Fusion. I think what's either going to happen is either Fusion's going to slice up the wheels, which is why I'm probably going to go Fusion for this fight. There will be another reason why in a little mo in a moment, but I could see Huge pulling this off too, because like as we saw in Fusion and Emulsifier, like it's not too hard to penetrate that armor on Fusion at least. I don't know if penetrate's the right word, because like basically Emulsifier managed to break open the top armor, which I believe is what caused the light bulb fire in that one, and Huge is capable of doing that too, so. But my other concern is for Huge is, like, take a look at their opponents so far. Like, they're good opponents. Shatter and Blip are great opponents, but none of them are spinners. This is the first spinner Huge will be going up against this season. And just seeing, and it's the first horizontal spinner it's going up against in a long time, too. So I think the last horizontal spinner they fought was Gigabyte back in 2019, so... It's gonna be interesting to see how well Huge can take hits from like one of the one of the most destructive horizontal spinners in the field right now. So, so stuff like that's why I'm gonna go Fusion as of right now. So, uh, yeah, long discussion right there. But anything else on this one, or should we get to Witch Doctor and Fusion, which I well, think I mean, is the next one? Uh, I technically Huge. Did, uh, I think technically Huge is the last horizontal. Opponent was last season in retrograde. Oh, yeah, malice actually. I suppose retrograde too. Oh yeah. Well, retro retrograde didn't know, retrograde, retrograde didn't use the, retrograde didn't use the horizontal yeah, spinner against huge. Yeah, I don't but remember if retrograde didn't use the horizontal spinner. In that they did not. They they sacrificed the horizontal well, spinner for malice. Yes, malice there would be malice. malice could run the horizontal spinner. Yep, malice has a horizontal spinner. So, but regardless, though, it's still been a while since they fought a horizontal spinner and the and. Yeah, just any spinner in general, they haven't fought one this season, so. Yeah, anything else, or next fight? Uh, next no. fight. Next fight. Next fight. Okay, Ooh. Witch Doctor Fusion, and this one, I'll let Siv talk about this one first, and so I know Siv saw this one live, but. Yeah, th this was a great oh, showdown, and this was my this was my big take on the episode where I predicted Fusion was going to win this fight, and I know Blaze also picked Fusion for this one too. But this was this was awesome, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna give the floor to Siv to, to talk about this fight. Yeah. Oh God, that fight was a fucking heart attack and a half. I I see. Okay, so if I came up to all of you and told you which Doctor versus Fusion was probably the best fight I saw live, none of y'all would believe me. All of y'all would call Madcap and say that I'm I'm the favela. And oh well, my god, like... shut up, Cracker. <laughs> um, but uh, this was a crazy fight. Like, which Doctor's like front end scheme was a bit like questionable i think personally i would have gone with a maybe a fork setup like what it sh showed as like it's trademark 2020 to 2021 design but you know it's whatever but yeah fusion came out swinging with that vert and god fusion's just so low to the ground man and you know that horizontal spinner is just so powerful and that entire that entire fight was just such a roller coaster to watch live. Like, you know, you see all these, cause like you're watching like a horizontal spinner spinning at like God knows how fast, and it's just ripping out metal pieces to the corner of the wall. Like, I'm pretty sure Witch Doctor's wedge hit the wall. I think like the the Lexan glass, and it was just insane to watch, and it was it was just such a heart racing fight to see and. Yeah, it was so sad to me when it was so sad to me when Fusion started like crab walking because like 
I, I was really wanting to see Fusion pull out that upset, but it, it just couldn't do it in the end. Gotcha. Uh, Blazer BBN, you two want to talk about this one? Yo, this fight was base. One of the, probably the best fight of the season so far, in my opinion. The only one I can oh, yeah. really. It's think definitely up game. there for me. Both fusion yeah, fights are fight... like. Oh, yes. Yeah. Man, I was going to say that the only one that really comes to mind that, like, compares to this fight is Fusion's other fight against Emulsifier, which was, oh my goodness, that was such a banger. Um, honestly, before uh, I saw the card, I with what I had heard about this fight, I thought this fight was going to honestly be going to be the main event of the episode. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, BBN, you want to talk about this fight? Uh, all the people on the internet that think that Fusion was robbed is completely... No. I don't think they're right. Um, you you cite damage, you cite um, like physical damage on like outward appearance. Oh, Fusion got like the the side of the wedge taken off of Witch Doctor. There, there's that, there's external damage, and then there's internal damage as well that people have to consider, which I think when people pick apart fights and then go to Facebook or Reddit and complain, uh, don't necessarily think about. Uh, I made a comment on one of the Facebook groups that, that was like, oh, Fusion should have won. And I'm like, internal damage is just as important, if not more important, than external damage. At the end of the fight, Fusion couldn't drive very well. And both of their weapons were down. And the whole like which, to... and the whole like which doctor didn't actually do that argument is irrelevant because self inflicted damage is still damage. So even yep, if which doctor exactly. did fuck all to that, it's still damage that goes in which doctor's favor. Yeah, boys, you want to talk? Yeah, but or, yeah, you keep going, BBN. Internal damage counts just as much as external damage people are just just don't look at that when they make those types of arguments absolutely blaze you want to talk about the decision that since we haven't heard from you and i know i'm going to talk about the decision and what i thought on it well so, i'm going to say another thing that happened in this fight is that witch doctor i believe this is the first time witch doctor has lost a wheel since the minotaur fight in 2018 which is nearly five uh... years I think it lost a I wheel believe. in the Sawblaze fight. At the 2020 Sawblaze fight, I want to say it lost a wheel. Yeah. No, because no, I remember Witch Doctor was saying that they ne they hadn't lost a wheel since the uh, Minotaur fight in their Minotaur first, in their 2021 Minotaur video. I don't, I don't remember. Video or Minotaur video. One of those videos. It wouldn't surprise they me. Were they were, yeah. And then, um, uh, Witch Doctor... So Fusion, I can I can see the argument for why Fusion should have won the fight, but I personally agree with the decision. Um, look, Reese is hilarious, and I love him, but like, uh, Witch Doctor definitely won the fight. Yeah, yeah and I th I think the I think the crazos on. Right at that bash on the judges for getting it wrong are the only people really upset about it because everyone at live pretty much knew that Witch Doctor won this. Now, were there some people that said that Fusion didn't pull off the upset? Yeah, probably. God knows I was sad. But I don't think anyone was like, livid Fusion lost this decision live. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the most part. But... I think... I think, um, also, like, if they thought they won the fight, they could have used their, their, I'm just going to call it the challenge flag, because that's the most, that's the closest thing to it, and, like, oh, I want to bring sports. that like, up, they could have thrown their bring... challenge flag and be, like, I want to bring that up also, um, that's actually, watching it live, that's actually not the first time it was, that it was, like, asked, um, I want to say 
after Malice versus Lockjaw, um, Ma Bunny kind of hinted that she didn't really agree with the decision as much because uh, Lockjaw kind of had like dead drive by the end of the fight. And then right. Chris and Kenny, Chris Kenny were like, uh, "You want to use your uh, challenge card?" And Malice was like, "Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to use it that early into the season. I think we'll just keep it." Exactly. I did not know that Malice had some disagreements with the decision, but yeah, I might be wrong about it. But from what I remember, that's that was. It's possible. It's possible they just asked that that then just because like that was a close fight between Malice and Lockjaw. And I'm surprised yeah. they didn't ask it during the beta Kraken fight because that fight was really close. They well. might have, they might have there as well. I don't know. They might have, but the f oh, wait, I thought it was only on split decisions. Oh no, you can use it. Well, I think Mal Mal's Malice Lockjaw was, was unanimous good. as well. Yeah, because I believe I know in the beginning of the episode they were saying how there has not been a split decision. Yeah, and then they announced yeah. after this fight that this was the first split decision. Metalbox always does something like that. Yeah. But yeah. It's kind of annoying like, in my opinion, but whatever. Okay. Hey, so, all. so yeah, my takes on this one then. Uh, banger fight. Absolutely a banger showdown here. And Fusion, despite not winning this fight, Fusion looked great in this fight. Like, we got to see some great action from both weapons of Fusion. Uh, too bad the vertical spinner fell not too long into the fight, because, like, definitely my concern for Witch Doctor using that configuration really came into play right there. So it looks like Witch Doctor was going to try to outdrive Fusion and go just for the horizontal spinner, knowing that that was probably the hardest weapon against their internals, at least. More likely to cause a fire, which is what Witch Doctor was trying to go for with this fight. It wasn't working out so well for them, because that Reese was driving this fight. He was doing a great job driving this match. But, yeah, after that, we got to see a bunch of action from the horizontal spinner, including some action from Witch Doctor's spinner. Some hits by Witch Doctor, then the loss of Witch Doctor's spinner, big chunk of the wedge, one of Witch Doctor's wheels as well, and uh, lots of damage, basically, before Fusion got flipped, lost the horizontal spinner. It looks like they lost a drive motor in there. I think that's what the plume of smoke was, one of their motors burning out. And a lot of crab walking for the rest of the match right there. And regardless, it was a great fight from both both robots really impressed me. The amount of damage Fusion was able to do, including it didn't catch fire in this fight. Witch Doctor's durability was proven in this it fight. A, no doubt with how with how how many hits it took in this fight. And was able to still keep running with great drives. So uh Fusion link. Wait, this is this wasn't fusion. Fusion didn't catch fire, guys. Yeah, I know. It's not fusion. I'm, I'm Someone didn't get some meltdown. Hashtag not my fusion. <laughs> yeah. But... Hashtag not my fusion. Oh no. As for the oh, uh, Reese Stewart smiled on live on live uh, <laughs> when he got interviewed. What? <laughs> That's funny. What? No. Impossible. What? Hashtag yeah, not my fusion. Yeah. Hashtag not my Reese. Boss. Boss. Boss smiled. Uh, now, it was the slightest smile ever in human history, but it was a smile nonetheless. But yeah, regarding the decision, though, I, I'm i pretty much with the other three. I agreed with the decision right there. I can definitely see where people are going with that one, because like, at least from watching it, it looked like Fusion did a lot more damage to Witch Doctor, including had had active weapons for longer in this one. But like these three all said, mobility, I, and what Witch Doctor said at the end of the fight, I think mobility is definitely what killed Fusion in this one. I would have given, I would have given Fusion, I would have given the Fusion the edge on like, uh, I think they controlled a little more of the match right there, but I think Witch Doctor wins on a, like aggression and damage. So I would give Witch Doctor the edge on this fight, but it was a very close fight, and I can absolutely see where people are coming from and why this judge's decision was split. I support Reese's decision to not appeal this judge's decision right there, as I think it, I think combination of that it was such a close fight, it really could have gone either way, and that what if he needs it for a, a decision that's a lot more controversial in the upcoming, 
at least. Cause, especially especially yeah. especially because of his future two matchups, because he has huge and yeah. that's gonna be a hard that's gonna be a hard, hard match. He's gonna need that show. That oh yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it's not an easy road coming is, for Fusion going forward, but this was in no way a bad loss for Fusion one ab bit. Absolutely. Ab Absolutely, probably, probably the strongest one and one in BattleBots history. I would, I would probably agree. It's definitely way up there. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about their next fights. And unless if anybody else has anything to talk about here, but I will also, uh, I actually no, forget that because there's something else I want to say. Like, definitely the community didn't went after this fight less than what they have at least in the at least what they had like after the malice emulsifier but complaining that Battlebots is rigged in favor of witch doctor bruh I, I, if, some, if somebody wants to read out that that copy pasta that somebody was putting in Pori's server go for it All but right, uh right, I got this yeah like I like Jeez. Balbus is not going to rig something like this. As, I mean, Witch Doctor might be a fan favorite, but Balbus does not script this stuff. Like, all right, all right guys. All right, go for it, guys. I have the copy pasta ready. This new rule, this new challenge rule, should be called the Witch Doctor rule. They're always giving help to Witch Doctor win by giving it an easy path or setting it free, like the bout with Minotaur. Which I have never seen until then. I'm calling it now. Witch Doctor will have a loss overturned with this new appeal rule. I guarantee it. And of course, it will happen under questionable circumstances. Yes, I had to say it in that voice. Yeah, that's fair. Number fifteen, Burger King foot lettuce. What I what yeah. I what I will say though is, uh, Greg Munson when he was on for, on this podcast for the preseason show. Uh, he defended that the he defended that decision, the unsticking decisions for the Witch Doctor Minotaur fight as well as the Whiplash Cobalt fight as for why they unstuck Witch Doctor there and why they didn't unstick Whiplash for that fight. He defended those things really well in that preseason show. And I definitely recommend checking that out if you want clarification on exactly what was going on with that. So Well, I mean that's definitely yeah. the best uh podcast in my opinion oh yeah it was it was Please a great one check it out but let's talk about next fights we've already talked about pre fusion and huge as we literally just talked about that at the end of the previous fight uh witch doctor and gruff what are our thoughts on that one well witch doctor so, okay, okay. so here's how gruff beats witch doctor so the gruff team kidnaps the witch doctor team and holds them hostage <laughs> and oh. then they win by <laughs> by witch doctor not showing up so uh while i while i do disagree with all the comments about witch doctor and team witch doctor robotics um i must say that since all the like schedules for each battle bot was like pre-chosen beforehand i will say that they kind of gave witch doctor a bit of an easy schedule yeah it's gotten um ribot and Tant tant no not tantra Minotaur. Uh, Minotaur. I will say like you know which doctor's the runner up and it's gotten two bots that didn't make bracket last season that's a bit of a I won't say gimmies because you know Gruff is a not Gruff Fusion has kicked ass this season but you know it's kind of this will kind of be an, be a bit of an easy fight for which doctor sorry Gruff but uh I'm I'm personally going witch doctor for this one. That's crazy. Blazer, I think this will this will be similar to uh, the the Cobalt uh, Gruff fight, where I just think Cobalt just goes to town on Gruff. Which Doctor is going to go to town on on uh, Gruff, and it's it's going to be sad to see just Gruff just kind of lay there, like and just hobble around like an old lady, but you know. I've already said how Gruff can beat Witch Doctor, so. <laughs> but, yeah, so my take on Witch Doctor Gruff, uh, 
Sam's gonna need to drive that fight perfectly. It's like free shipping Hydra, just it's Gruff and Witch Doctor instead. Like, Witch Doctor has a huge design advantage in this one. They've looked great. Like, in past seasons, you could maybe say Gruff could win this fight by outlasting Witch Doctor, but just look at this fight right here. Like, Witch Doctor's durability is incredible this year compared to what we've seen in seasons past. Like, Gruff's not going to outlast Witch Doctor or by, like, taking punishment and hoping Witch Doctor breaks itself or something like that. So, Gruff's going to need to outdrive Witch Doctor and control the fight and avoid that vertical spinner as much as possible. Maybe break the vertical spinner, like what Fusion was able to do here, which I think will be is very unlikely for Gruff to be able to do. I personally would agree with BBN. I think this will be a somewhat a, a bit of a repeat of Cobalt and Gruff here. That's kind of how I'm picturing this fight going. So, uh, yeah, anything else on this one, or should we get to the next one? All right, next one. Uh, but we're actually going to be transitioning over to the Doomba Double Tap filming segment. So, but after that, we'll get to the main wait, event. Hold on, I want. I wasn't. What's up? I, I wasn't in this segment, so I'll just say this. Double tap undefeated, baby. What? what? I like how you're mocking Mantine. <laughs> what what cringe what cringeness there was. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway, let's get on to the next one. Okay, so now for the next fight here. So you're going to notice this is a little bit different because we're recording a separate segment for this, but I'm choosing to edit. I edited this thing right in the video. We're talking about Doomba versus Double Tap for the for the next part here, and we're here with Doomba. Multiple members there. We got Bryce Farrell right up top, and then a couple team members right down below. So, might as well ask, how are you? All, how are you three doing? Doing well. Thanks for having us. Uh, I couldn't hear anything from you two. Yeah, Chris, I can't hear you. <gasps> oh, I can hear something. Yeah, there we, go. Yep. there we go. <laughs> Hopefully we turn the, the mute off. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had that before. But yeah, glad glad to have glad to have you on once again because uh yeah, we had we had you guys on for the newcomer podcast as uh earlier and it's great to be able to talk about this fight with you all. So even if it was a bit short and probably didn't go the way it was intended, but uh it's still fun regardless to talk about it. So, so it, I was so, going to say it, it went exactly the way we thought it would go for better or worse. Yeah. 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 And then BBN Smurf and blaze are all here and we'll discuss this fight. So, uh, yeah. And so coming in, coming into this, uh, Basically, you mentioned this, and you mentioned this in the post-fight recap that uh, you guys were originally supposed to fight Rusty for the first fight. So I was wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit, bit about like what that experience following that was kind of like, because like you were, knew, knew you were originally going to fight Rusty, but then ended up ended up switching over to Double Tap. So. Yeah, yeah, we were super excited to fight Rusty. That's the fight I think everyone wants to see, the two cutest bots going at it. However, Rusty had some engine problems, so we were trying to help him out where we could. You know, we were keeping tabs on him. At the same time, we were prepping our second frame. So we brought two robots this year. One of them was fully ready to go as soon as we arrived. The other one, we still had to assemble a bunch of the pieces together. So we were working on that and just kind of leaving the first frame as good enough because... Good enough versus rusty is a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah, when I saw when I, when the website came out with all the competitors, Doomba and Rusty were both on it. And when I did the uh, show, when I talk, did a little bit of discussion on the website, basically, and saw those two were on there, basically mentioned that I felt there was no doubt at some point in the season. Doom Bud Rusty was going to happen, but sadly we got bad news about Rusty at least, and Bryce mentioned that, and if you haven't seen that, Rusty did post on social media, basically talking about what's going on, and so 
Yeah, and so instead, of, instead, I ended up getting double tap for an opponent, as I kind of already mentioned here, and this fight ended up going a little bit quick. So, what was kind of the strategy going into this fight then with the, this match? So we were told we were fighting Rusty, uh, or fighting double tap about five minutes before the fight started. Ooh. We were hurried down to the battery wow. tent where we had everything all prepped and ready for Rusty, and there was like, hey. Uh, change of plans. You guys are going to fight double tap now. If you don't want the fight, you don't have to take it, but we're going to disqualify another team that needs another, you know, 10, 15 minutes to get ready. So we're like, yeah, we'll take it. I just want to fight, you know, fights are always good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It always, it's always a good experience, especially since like, I think this was, if I take, yes, this was its first appearance in the battle box at least. And, uh, definitely would be a good thing like even even if even if uh it was a really last minute change of events right there it's a good test opportunity for doomba at least just knowing that how many issues some teams have had like with putting their robot in the battle box in the test box so plus as well it's robot combat it's a lot of fun and fun yeah fun it was the first fight for both of us and we were yeah. we were excited to see how it would do yeah, including we found out from Double Tap's po post fight report that, that robot also wasn't at 100% exactly because the thing that makes Double Tap unique, they mentioned they didn't have those uh they didn't they didn't have the the special blades. I keep forgetting what the term is they use for them. Um so they end up coming in with just the regular bar and uh Yeah. yeah the, the day before they were in the test box doing their tests and they spun their weapon up to 250 and they're like this is awesome and then the uh safety guy was like oh does it go higher and they were like yeah but we're not going to run it higher and he was like we'll run it higher anyways so they they spun it up to like 350 or so and something let go oh now i can't tell if bb and if you're just having audio issues or something i don't know but uh it's it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny regardless. So uh Yeah. <laughs> so how about uh Blaze, you want to talk about your thoughts on the fight then? Well, uh I mean, I was confused in why you guys ran the hammer config, but now that I know that you guys didn't know that you were fighting double tap until like what you said like 15 minutes before the fight. 5 5 5 Oh, yeah. yeah, that makes a that makes a lot of sense in why you guys didn't choose to switch configs because you probably didn't have enough time to. No, we barely finished getting the uh, sponsor decals on backstage. Like oh, the woman prepping us, like you have sixty seconds, sixty seconds. You have to go no matter what. And we're like, okay, we well, have like thirty seconds of putting on stickers left, so let's do it. So yeah, you didn't have time, which. I mean, do you think you could have beaten Double Tap if you ran uh, like a config designed for horizontal spinners? Or If we ran the uh, armored frame and we had the drive dialed in, then it's definitely a fair fight. Like, There's a real yeah. chance that we would be able to get around behind them, that we could tank a couple of those hits. Yeah. Yeah, before we start recording, Bryce mentioned that they they used a config like specifically planned for Rusty, but then as he mentioned already, five minutes before they were originally gonna fight Rusty, ended up getting told they were gonna fight double tap instead. And that's that's just crazy at least. A big twist, big twist, but uh it was it's still fun to still fun at least. So Yeah. And gl <laughs> glad that you all had fun at least with it. So Oh, so much fun. Uh, the producers tried to give us double tap again, like a week later, and we we're like, uh, if, "If you can't do anything else, we'll try again." But gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, so we ended up seeing kind of this fight ended up ending in like one to two big hits. Double tap mentioned they were concerned a little bit about the undercutter, at least possibly slicing up up their wheels and. Fortunately, it still ended up going in double taps favor because they managed to land a couple of hits and that was it. What was kind of some of the damage done in that fight that kind of caused some of that stuff? So the first hit came in dead on 
lid level and just knock all of the weld nuts free. So then our guts were spilling out. The first hit also almost unplugged one of our motors. Yeah, going through afterwards, we realized that we zip tied every single connection except for one. And it got loosened there. And then when we hit the kill saw slot, that wire just popped the rest of the way out. So we were down drive on one side. Yikes. Um, yeah. Their final, oh, keep their final hits came in and then just hit right in the uh, battery switches. We knew that they were exposed there on the outside. But again, this was a hammer frame. So we weren't expecting to get hit on the outside like that. But definitely move those inboard for the rest of our fights. Yeah, gotcha. That would definitely make sense as for especially why the fight was a little quick. What was that, Blaze? I said that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so basically then, uh, kind of like, kind of like next question is basically, were there any, were there any improvements you made coming off of like the recap from this fight, at least for whatever upcoming fights you have next? And that was going to kind of bring me to my part two question. Are we going to see Doomba in the battle box once again this season? Yeah. Chris, do you want to hit the upgrades for us? Uh, yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me? Yep. 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 So uh, the upgrades that we uh, that we have, we went to an AR five hundred uh, frame, full frame rather than UHMW for the hammer frame. Uh, also, we have a brushless drive. Um, our uh, as you've seen how Doomba was moving around in the box, um, he's probably four, maybe five times faster than that um, with our <clears throat> with our other frame. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I think those are the and then moving the switches inboard. I think those are the well nuts. Oh yeah, and yeah, and the well nuts. <laughs> uh, I think those are the 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 big changes for uh, for that change or for that chassis. Gotcha. Yeah, and so then kind of like for the part two of that question, like we know there are four other hidden fights between exhibition or between alternate robots. Because yeah, if you yeah, basically for the viewers, if you didn't know, if you didn't know it already this ma this matchup was a battle between two alternates basically who did get some regular season fights and it was confirmed online that like if an alternate was to do well enough an alternate could make the bracket so so we could end up seeing either of these two robots in the bracket if they perform well enough throughout their next couple fights uh so Basically, my next question would be, uh, are we going to see Doomba in any of those upcoming four fights or or in possibly like Exhibition or Golden Bolt bracket, if you're able to reveal that? Yeah, we have one more alternate fight coming up that you'll see in the early season. And then we have one Exhibition fight that we filmed in one of the last days. And the fights get progressively better. And the last one is absolutely amazing, just for the sheer stupidity of it. <laughs> Yeah, mm. glad 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 to see that there could definitely be that there will definitely be some improvements out of it. We kind of heard the same thing from Horizon, whom we had on the podcast uh, last week. That that like despite despite the issues we saw them have in their fight with Shredit Pro, they got some they got some fights coming up soon that they say like should be a lot better than what we saw previously, which is all which is always a great thing to see from new robots, and definitely will be interesting to see. Definitely be interesting to see like who they get paired up against for the upcoming matchups and yeah, ho yeah hopefully it'll a, be a lot really of the rookie bots this year had a lot of teething issues. Like even Shredder Pro, it was it was doing okay. And then at one point they figured it out and you're like, this is a whole new robot. This thing's wild. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Pori, one of the other co hosts yeah. who's not here, has really been hyping up Shredder Pro, so uh, then we'll see Shred Pro's fu next fight soon, I think. So, uh, yeah, we went from being like, "Please give us credit, please give us credit." To I don't know if I want him. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 does make sense. Uh, like even in the fight with Horizon, it la did manage to land some hits. Where you wonder, would you want to get paired up with that thing? And like, definitely, it sounds like uh, Evan Arias definitely was able to tune that robot up pretty well. So. Yeah, they have the experience, so it's kind of surprising Absolutely. to see them come in that week. But I'm so glad that they got all their bugs worked out. Absolutely, yeah. I, I can't wait to I can't wait for its fight with Ominous because like Ominous also had some some minor issues, and just seeing who, which ro which of those two robots bounce back should be very entertaining to see. And yeah, this is an awesome season. Just some wild fights the whole way through. Yeah, 
Civilian Arc hinted at quite a lot of that stuff when he attended it live. There were quite a few great fights that he saw, which I think he only, I think he only saw through fight two of the qualifying robots. And okay. Yeah, but regardless, there should be some great stuff coming. So, and uh, yeah. Is there anything else I think we forgot on the post-fight thing? BBN, if your audio is working. You got any thoughts on the fight? Uh, um, there we can go. We, can we check? Oh, perfect. Yep. Um, okay. I was I was focusing on that so much that I kind of zoned out of the conversation, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but um, sort of the same. I mean, we already talked about like Simpson. It's going to be like a similar scenario with Horizon where like, Doomba, like I'm excited to see another fight with Doomba just because of the fact that um there's gonna be improvements that are gonna be happening. Um so this isn't a full conclusive look at Doomba. And I think I said the same thing with Horizon that this isn't a full conclusive look of what Horizon was uh last week. Um, but I I'm I am excited. I enjoy that there's a giant chainsaw on top of it. I just think it's really cute. I I, I love Doomba. Doomba is great. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I yeah, I absolutely yeah. love that thing. Other others might not, but I think that's an adorable design. And and like and like you said, right before the match, it's fun and and all that stuff. And uh, it was funny in the post fight uh, recap post and. and I always, I always, I always have fun with this. Whenever you fact check uh, Chris and Kenny mentioning that the chainsaw was not a prop, like they said <laughs> on the show, and yeah, I was about to mention that. <laughs> yeah, fully working chainsaw. We have a custom bar, so we can run carbide chain on it. It'll cut through steel very slowly. Probably not AR steel. Uh, we've done tests on our YouTube. If you want to see it, absolutely. And yeah, I, I do plan to post. Uh, Put the put link to Doomba's YouTube channel uh, in the description because there is some. They, they there's a lot of fun content on there and included including also they got fun they got some fun merch stuff including Bryce Farrell actually ran the Kickstarter poker chip thing, and which I have which I have my box with my poker chip set right down below here and great way to support the teams and some great merch too. So uh, yeah, last week we attacked a fire extinguisher to see what would happen. There's plans in the work for an even more ridiculous video, so I'm I'm pumped there. Oh boy! All right. now I now I really can't wait to see this. <laughs> we we see we see some really we see some and it's incredible. Yeah, we've seen some really adorable videos like on the Duma channel in the past. It sounds like something more interesting is coming as well. <laughs> oh boy! Most definitely. And I think the last thing I'd say is we're going to be at Motorama uh, two weeks from now, February 18, 19. So we'll have Doomba there. We're going to have a whole bunch of Roombas fighting. Uh, come out, meet the team, check us out, see the robots. Absolutely, absolutely. I, w I, I wish I could come to some of that stuff. Uh, I can't. I can't even use the same reasoning I normally would, which is that I'm currently at college taking classes right now because I'm actually on a co-op this spring semester. So. Uh, yeah, so anyone but, near Harrisburg, yeah. Pennsylvania, come on out. Hey, 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 hey. Me, hey, Pori can. I, I mm. might decide to. Me or Pori could. Yeah, P Pori, Pori lives right near Philadelphia, so. so yeah, he's not a terrible distance away. And he he always had been talking talking about, because uh, when we had Chuck on the podcast, uh, basically, Pori ended, Pori ended up getting a Gamma Raptor, and he was considering maybe sometime may bring it to like a competition display it or something like that and is very very incredible and yeah it's a great event lots of battle bots teams there uh some bots came out of there like huge was originally a competitor there before getting scaled up and going to battle bots so Ooh, I, did, I actually did not know that but that's incredible and clearly, yeah clearly we will have talked about it by this point in the video but uh yeah, I'm super glad with the amount of success Huge has been having so far this season. And yeah, it's it's one of those seasons where you look at it and it's like, is this Huge's year? Like it could be all the planets are aligning. Yes, yeah, so, so far it's awesome. been going well for them. And it's been going really well for Huge. Oh yeah, absolutely. And 
Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, anything else really to talk about with Doomba and Double Tap from really anybody? Yes, I don't think it's it's not known what Doomba or Double Tap's next opponent is, but heard from Bryce that they do have a couple more fights coming. And Double Tap, I think they hinted somewhere that they have quite a few, they have more fights coming as well, at least from what I've heard from Hori. Might have been mentioned on like Reddit or something, but. Yeah, they get back out there and they yeah. finally get to Double Tap, so. <laughs> yeah, Oh, Yo, they get to Double Tap? Wait, someone mentioned the fire extinguisher? Oh no, <laughs> my natural weakness. I can't get <laughs> here. <laughs> It'd be fun. Oh, it'd, no. be, it'd be funny if there was another Doom a double tap fight, and that's where the fire extinguisher comes into play, or something like that. So. That would be hilarious. Oh, it literally also, would be. I'm watching the the Doomba versus extinguisher, like the fire extinguisher video right now, and I enjoyed that your spinner is a Pikachu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yo. Yeah, we we tried to run that at BattleBots, but like as we expected, the legal team, like their entire response was. Sorry, no. That was their entire response. <laughs> oh, that's Aww. so that, that, that's unfortunate. A, yeah, no. that's so unfortunate. Man, that would have been so that's awesome so to see. Cool. The Pikachu spinning blade. Yeah, I mean, who would it want? Who would it want to? What if you got sponsored blade? by Pokemon? And then yeah. that would, yeah, just get that would be allowed. Yeah. Exactly. The blade's <laughs> terrifying too. It's it's balanced, but the like the aerodynamics of it are so bad, it's <laughs> Just screaming and vibrating everywhere. It's great. Kind of, kind of like, kind of like the, like the war cry or whatever, or whatever you want to call it from Aegis and the blood sport fights in a way. Hey, what we were seeing at the end of that there. I don't know what to call that, but um... yeah, yeah, where it's not quite a hum and it's something more ominous. Ooh. Ooh. Ominous, like yeah. that robot, <laughs> like the robot ominous. <laughs> It's gonna be one of those words I have to learn not to use, like huge. <laughs> huge? Like no, 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 no. I'm not gonna go to that. that <laughs> like the, I'm not like gonna... the huge robot. <laughs> yeah. No, more like oh a huge gosh. spinner. That's crazy. Huge? Wait, the bit like the bot with two big wheels and a vertical spinner down the middle. No, that no blaze, that's Star Child. No, I said it down the middle. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and Star Trials is at the end. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's the point, though. If I'm just talking and I want to say the word huge and I don't mean the robot huge, huge? I just say massive. I don't even say the word yet anymore. That's hilarious. Because <laughs> every time someone's like, oh, huge? The robot? The robot? Yo. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, now we can't even say Horizon anymore. Oh my goodness, BattleBots is taking over. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Oh no. They're taking over oh. all the names. Not the names. Oh, Not the names. Oh, what are we ever gonna do? Ooh. I don't know. What are we gonna what are we gonna do? Ooh, I don't know. What are we gonna do? Uh well any, Go on any, to the next fight. No, I'm joking. <laughs> any other thoughts well, on Doomba versus double tap? Then, anyway, since I don't think we know, since it's not known what Doomba or Double Tap's next fight is, we can't really talk about that. So, but I'm yeah. sure Doomba will win. It's the next I'm sure fight. Double Tap will lose. Oh, we'll find we'll find out because we know there are a couple there are a couple more alternates still left in the field because I know yeah because I know there yeah because I know Terror Top still has yet to fight. Slamo still has yet to fight. And Doom. Yeah, there's Doom as well. Uh, I, do. I know we'll be seeing Dragon King at some point. Uh, Greg Munson hinted on the podcast that Samurai apparently has a fight coming, but I think that's an exhibition Wait. based on what he hinted at. So, it, regardless, it should be really exciting to get to see like all those robots in action and get to see what they all can can do. And yeah, I will say about Teratops, it is the most best put together rookie bot I've ever seen. Like they clearly did their homework, and where Double Tap went through with the Reddit threads and just took all the bad advice, like, "Oh, you should do this. Oh, you should put like jet thrusters on it," and they're like, "Yeah, let's do all that." Her, uh, that was a great idea. Teratops went through and they just looked at all like the internal pictures and like, "Okay, I know why they're doing that. That makes sense. Why are they doing that? Maybe we should try that." So, great work from that team.
Oh yeah, absolutely. Great way to learn learn more about what what could make the robot better. And yeah, ho hopefully we'll get to see Teratops fight fight soon. First fight soon. Soon. I don't know when the I don't know when the next episode is that will feature one of the one of those four other fights because I don't have I don't have my list right in front of me, but. Yeah, I know Pori and I have been Pori and I made a prediction that we think Slammo and Terror Tops is gonna happen, and uh, maybe we'll be right on that. We don't know, so or maybe you'll be wrong. Yeah, we could we could be wrong because no. there are several different combinations. And so we, I mean, there there is a limited amount of combinations technically, oh, yeah, but, but like, but it's also BattleBots, and you never know what they're gonna do. Oh yeah, exactly. exactly. You never know. <laughs> which which you got the perfect example the five minutes before the double yeah. tap fight you found out you're gonna fight double tap which is yeah and then a few days later they're like yeah how about double tap again and we're like mm -hmm. <laughs> now I now I kind of want to see I kind of want to see a double tap and slam mo fight I think that would be really interesting of a fight a fight to see in a good mm -hmm. test of both robots I I think so that's that's one match I'm gonna fingers crossed now that we get but yeah we'd love to rematch them again next year too just mm. upgrade both the bots come back and see what happens will doomba be at the destructathon event we're considering going out for one or two of them but not as a regular competitor gotcha yeah that ma that makes sense so yeah it'd be a great great way to show off the uh, whatever upgrades you plan to make to doomba following this season so uh, and all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah. Is there anything? Is there anything we missed from this fight, or anything from the recap that we missed? Mm, no, not that I can think of. Okay, but BBN Blaze or Smurf, even though Smurf doesn't typically talk talk directly in here. Smurf I have a chat box. Talk. I have a chat box up for Smurf. But uh, any of you three have anything left to talk about? I, I think I'm good. No, no, not really. Uh, Smurf says none from him. So, uh... okay. So yeah, I'll let's... end with a couple hints about Doomba V3. Okay. The cat is complete. Oh. We're getting it. Like we're double checking it before we send it off to production. More armor, bigger weapons, bigger chainsaw, like everything you want. Let's go. Yo, bigger chainsaw. Bigger oh, yeah. chainsaw. And then All right, maybe, the, and then maybe winner pick right on. there. Winner pick right there. Doomba 2.0. And then, may, and then maybe next season we'll finally get Doomba versus Rusty fight that I know at least I wanted. Sounds like you guys wanted as well. Oh, I'm top sure, of the list. I'm sure many other fans probably wanted that one too. And yeah, so uh, right. yeah, we'll soon be moving on to the next fight. But thanks to the Doomba team for coming into this, even if it was just for this one fight. Uh, Best of luck to them with Motorama and getting the new Doomba ready, since it sounds like that's all in progress. And definitely their YouTube channel, social media info, and merch stuff will be linked down in the description of this video. I would highly recommend checking all that stuff out because uh, fun merch, lots of fun videos, and they do they do post fight recaps on social media. So it'll be a great way after seeing seeing some of their fights just to see what went wrong, what went right, uh, and some other stuff about that match. So, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks to them for coming once again, and let's go ahead and move on to the next fight then. Thanks for having us. That's on to the crazy. On to the main event. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Riptide oh, and right. Mad Cat. Oh, Riptide gosh. and Mad Catter, which is the main event for this week. Battle between two robots who had a very effective first victory, basically. Both of them had a great start to the season. Riptide with that quick victory over Glitch. And then Mad Catter with that dom pretty dominant victory over Whiplash. And these two are going to clash it out. And this was a pr pretty good pairing, at least, between be since uh, Mad Catter, the team, knows the design of Riptide so well for reasons that I'm betting at least BVN is going to bring <laughs> up. up. So, uh... I, yeah, and I what I, 
I don't want to touch. I don't want to touch this controversy with a three foot, like a twenty foot pole. Okay? Somebody will. I but guarantee. I don't want to touch, touch it with the thirty nine. But and a half foot regardless, so I want to say one thing before I leave the Florida U three right there. For a fight that was only like thirty to forty five seconds, uh, I'm surprised about how back and forth this fight was, at least. And yeah, we got a pretty back and forth showing, and now Florida U three. I would not touch this this uh this controversy with a thirty nine and a half foot pole. But personally I it was it was a good fight. I, uh, yes, I I will admit that Riptide had a good fight, I know. Very surprising. This is the only time I'll ever admit that, and it's only because Mad Catter was involved. And by the way, I did not like I, I'm sad that Riphead won this fight. All right, anyways. Silver, BBN. Silver, you're gonna be the one that bites the bullet and does the. The bullet? Oh, you mean that Riptide's a fucking knockoff? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Pop off. You can if you want to. I don't care. Just Pop don't off. go. Just don't go uh, too back far. In, back in the olden days of NHRL. Uh, Calvin Evo built a robot that was a four-wheel vert. Holy shit, what a shocker. Um, it was an egg beater four-wheel vert, which is not much of a shocker because, you know, egg beaters aren't that big of a thing. Well, they are, but you get my point. But Its name was Lynx, and, uh, yeah, it was like, it's Lynx in time, and it linked all over the battle box, and then um, Ethan Kurtz was like, Holy shit. I used that design, and he, he brought that design and built it into a 250-pound concept. And it, it, it was supposed to got, have forks and shit, lifting forks, but we got debated, and they were like, ha-ha, no, lol, they don't actually exist. Funny. Um, uh, Riptide um, kind of... But... Yeah, Calvin Eba threw shade at Riptide, which is partly true. Um, yeah, um, Mad Catter took the L, uh, which is unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, BBN, I mean, what do you got? To this, I will say this. I mean, Calvin Eba's design is great. Um, I mean, it, it beat Mad Catter. Riptide literally just took Mad Catter to town, and I don't know. This was this was a good this was a good I'll, fight for for Riptide, this. which little pains me to say, but I'll I'll say this I'll, I'll say this. No matter what your opinion really is on Riptide, you can't really say it's a bad bot by any means. It's no, you it's, cannot. It's, it's a really it's a good bot. Ethan Kurtz driving is pretty good very uh, aggressive yes very aggressive and you know it, it it's some it part of I'll, I'll i'll say this no matter what my opinion is on like the whole linkscape thing is part of it has to come in with the driver like it, it, if you're if you're having this design and you're doing good it's not because it's not purely because you're based off of this successful beetle wave. If you're based off of this, if it's partly because based of that, you're based off of a successful be beetle wave, then sure, yeah, that's the thing. But you can't say that it has nothing to really do with Ethan's driving because Ethan is Ethan's been a really impressive driver for the past two seasons he's competed in. And yeah, I I, I do side with Calvin in the Linkscape situation, but I don't think that. that Riptide's success doesn't have anything to do with Ethan's driving, but I do think, think part of the reason is that me based off of a beat away, but yeah, that's that's my take. Yeah. Yeah, so that's for some of my takes on this, like the actual fight itself. Uh, like, Mad Cow got some good moments in, but holy crap, Riptide is definitely, Riptide's definitely on path for a deep run, another deep run this year because that was another great showing from Riptide and against another great robot too. And 
Like, Rip, Riptide, it could win the whole thing if it continues this path of destruction, even if there are some people here that might have other robots they'd rather win the title. Like, definitely Riptide's in good shape for something like this. And that definitely. was a that was a great win against Mad Catter, and hopefully we'll see Mad Catter bounce back from this one in their next fight with Big Dill. But uh, yeah, and so as for kind of the Riptide and Lynx thing, uh, definitely I will agree that uh, like Riptide just seems to be a big time scaled up version of Lynx right there. Which uh, yeah, I'm I. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I really want to say stole the design or anything like that because I have heard from one of one of the higher level one of the admins in the Battlebots Facebook group that it is possible that uh, that like, that Ethan might have bought like a three a similar three pound a similar lighter robot version of Lynx or I don't I think it was one of the other robots or something like that I don't remember all the details of it but. Uh, possible they went based off of that but i don't really want to dig too much into the controversy but i will say though that i do think this is like a very near replica of links and like yeah i don't i don't exactly want to call i don't exactly want to call it a stolen or copied design right there like what some people in the community have been talking about because like well that is a valid claim at least i think there are other possibilities to like look into so but I absolutely see everybody's points there with that. Yeah. So, just I'm just all like. All the. Go ahead, BBM. All the criticism shouldn't be put on the robot because the robot is good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is my last statement. That is my last statement. Yeah, because like this is still this is still a successful robot, and like got and like I'll still give I'll still give all the credit I can to like the Riptide team, to Ethan Kurtz, and the team right there because like great robot they've maintained it really well and it's definitely shown potentially going a deep run and like if it wasn't for if it wasn't for like their the builders abilities and ethan striving skills uh where tide probably wouldn't have won many fights like they are they earned that top eight run last season there's absolutely, absolutely no right. doubt about that and yeah yeah uh yeah, and so unless there's anything else to talk about this one, let's talk about their next opponents, where we'll have Mad Catter and Big Dill, Riptide and Captain Shredderator. So, yeah, who wants to start with that? <laughs> well, I mean, Riptide, Captain Shredderator, I mean, there's only real one way that can possibly go. And it's kind of sad that yeah, man. Riptide Captain Shredderator probably going to go through, you know. Okay, so if I res I like I don't respect your opinion already. <laughs> the, don't make Joking. don't make it get worse, all right? Joking. Like it's a um, funny. It's definitely a funny match. What do you think? Uh, I will say I this. Oh. I will say this. Uh, to quote, to quote Kenny Florian himself. And Reptide's next fight is Captain Shredderator. Winnable match. Yeah. And I think that's all I have to say. What about Mad Cat and Big Dill, both of you? I've heard, according to our... I've heard that this fight is a banger of a match. Ooh, yeah. I'd absolutely be up for that. Yeah, I hope, I hope it's a banger of a fight. Oh, it's a banger of I also was in the same call, and he said it was also a banger of a match. Yeah, so... guessing what they're talking about is heard from somebody who attended it live and saw the fight that heard there was a banger of a fight. So I'm gonna guess Zaza. I'm gonna guess Thank Zaza. If I, I'm gonna guess Zaza if I take a guess. Yeah, it was Zaza. It was Zaza. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I'll. Or actually, Sid, I'll let you talk first about their next opponent. So, uh, yeah, um, the things with Riptide and Captain Shredderator, um, 
why? That's that's. I think that's first and foremost why. Um. Second of all, uh, Riptide's winning. I bet, but Mad Catter versus Big Cock. Um. I think. Um. Again, why? Um. Also. I'll just say this, Big Deal has a fucked up schedule. Like, let me, let me pull it up again. Like, Other than free shipping, like, it definitely is tough. And maybe it hijinks. Has, like, it has, like, hijinks, which means, which, you know, I mean, kind of understandable. You gotta, you gotta beat someone that's higher than you to be, like, high. But then it fights Scorpios, a constant bracket maker. And then Mad Catter another constant bracket maker like why what did what did what did emmanuel carollo do to you um okay i wouldn't call that the most brutal but, um, schedule but it definitely is hard yeah keep in mind that big deal is an alternate so that means that schedule is either dooms or doubles hats. dooms i can confirm it's dooms it's Doom's schedule. Yeah, because hijinks revealed on their recap video after the big what bill fight that they were originally supposed to fight Doom. Why did Doom wait, 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 actually, actually. You know what I'm surprised the big bill doesn't fight? I'm surprised that they don't fight Beta. Yeah, just with how Doom and Beta are just so similar in shape. That's true. I feel like that Doom is for okay. I'm just gonna say, I feel like Doom is pretty much hammer style Vita. Yeah. With bracket traps. Well, it is. It is. Yeah, anyway, my takes on these two fights. Uh, we'll see Big Dill and Captain Shredder are both in the next episode. Because Big Dill has a fight with Scorpios coming in the next episode. Captain Shredder takes on hijinks in the next episode. But, uh, two hopefully good fights, and... Yeah, as for these two fights, I'm going to start with Riptide Captain Shredderator. I would love to see Captain Shredderator pull this one off, just to see Captain Shredder bounce back from that disappointing loss to Quantum and whatever happens in the hijinks fight, whether that's win or lose. I would absolutely love to see them pull off this win against Riptide, but I think odds are definitely not in their favor of winning that fight. I think... Riptide, I think, is gonna, most likely going to clap Captain Shredderator in that fight, and maybe we'll see a de-shelling of Captain Shredderator, which we haven't seen as for that robot. As for Mad Catter Big Dill, definitely I was thinking that would be a one-side fight for Mad Catter, but hearing that, hearing from Zaza that the fight's apparently going to be a, a banger of a fight and a bit more competitive, uh, Glad to see, glad to hear that at least that Big Dill is going to put up a massive fight in this one. I'm still going to go Mad Catter for this one, but I think this should be great. So, uh, yeah. Anything else on this one, or should we get to the last part of this of the main part of this podcast and go over the top yeah, eight yeah. outrageous moments? Okay, so at the end, Bal busted another extra special. Featuring lots of the builders talking about some moments, at least, where they did outrageous moments this time. And, yeah, we saw, yeah, we saw Nasty's, yeah, we saw Nasty's KOs in previous time. This time it's outrageous moments, so. Yeah, I'll review those a little bit, and then we can share some basic opinions, if we have any. Because I feel there's a lot less to talk about with this one. Yeah, they started out with number eight, which was deep six in the test box. Mostly referring to the first episode of the 2019 season where we saw video footage of Deep Six absolutely obliterating the test box in their first spin-up. Yeah, and the number seven being Broken Dreams is how they titled it, referring to Witch Doctor and Tombstone. I probably should have added 2015 to that, where they're referring to how Witch Doctor was winning that fight pretty well in that one. But then on the hit that broke Tombstone's blade in half, Witch Doctor flipped themselves over. Or, well, not exactly flipped themselves over, it's just they were flipped in that exchange and couldn't self right. Battle of the Behemoths, huge and mammoth, that's pretty straightforward. Same thing with Kraken Rotator. Tantrum Tombstone from 2018, which was my favorite moment of uh, the 2018 season when that fist got stuck in the glass. Talked about the Last Chance Rumble, the bike rack of Hydra, and then the rake of 
of Hypershock and the Warrior Clan fight. So, yeah, it was nice to hear lots of the builders' insight, including I mentioned this to these get, mentioned this to these guys earlier, but before we were recording, but. I find I found it a little funny that uh, Jake was driving the drone, at least in the Warrior Clan hy Hypershock fight, and and getting to hear his getting to hear his takes on that whole thing was uh, definitely fun to listen to, and yeah, I think it's great getting to listen, getting to hear from the builders at least and some of their takes on this stuff. So I think you guys have heard my stuff. Uh, you three got anything you want to say about this? Um, yeah. Hyperstock Rake moment number one base. Personally, I think that uh, that uh, Hyper Hypershock round one should have been on here just because of how silly the Uda was with Hypershock. Tech I believe Hypershock Uda did itself by like, driving, just yep. using Hydra as a ramp. Which that was actually going to bring up my neck, bring up the question I was going to talk about, where if they did a top ten moments and said, "What are the two you would add if you knew of any?" That'd be like one right there. So I don't even know what the other one I would add. The other one I would add, I will tell you this: uh, one of the ones I thought of that I would add would be like uh, they refer, they did this at the beginning of the last episode. Maybe all the times the mini bots have gotten shredded. Oh yeah, mini bots. Like especially like oh, I pro yeah. I probably say the two big oh, I one. I'd probably one. say the couple of big ones were either Witch Doctor blowing up its own mini bot in twenty nineteen in that rumble. Maybe when Nightmare connected with Shaman at that rumble. Possibly the fire that Claw Vipe on Claw Vipers mini bot after the Blood Sport fight. Or uh or Gassy Cat after the Sawblaze fight. I'd probably lean towards you Gassy know, Cat. No, I'd probably no. I'd probably lean towards the Gassy Cat one, just because how massive that was. But yeah, you got the idea. But you know what? You know what? I can think of two more. What you got? Doug versus Cobalt. Just with how with how much hits Cobalt got on Duck, and then it got stuck. And then Cobalt got high center. And then this. And then uh, Spitfire versus the Screws. That too. That's another good one. I also thought about um, um, Poison Arrow versus Son of Wayachi, just sort of how it was one shot and over, and one of the biggest hits of like early battle bots. Like, oh yeah, be, I mean that's also nastiest KOs, but I feel like there's a part that's like also applicable. Definitely. Uh, civilian arc. You got anything you want to talk about that? Whether it's at whether it's ranking any of those order any of those things or outright other moments you'd add to it. Uh, no. Fair enough. But yeah, anything else from anybody on the outrageous moments segment, or should we close out this part of the podcast? All right, we'll close out this part of the podcast. So. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll do it for this main part of the podcast. We'll be getting to recording the power ranking segment soon. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. We hit 500 subscribers last week. So major cheers to that right there. Uh, I plan to do some sort of celebratory. I plan to do some sort of celebratory stream at some point uh, in the works of deciding when that will be. I'll probably put a community post up with a poll right there allowing you guys to vote on what game you would like to see done for this thing. So that's the plan regarding that. Uh, everybody's channels who are involved with this one, including the Doomba team, will be linked down below in the description of this thing. Definitely check them out, because uh, like lots of them post some great content, even if they, even if some of them haven't posted in a while. Uh, I know BBN recently released a Power Rankings video. I believe Doomba put up a new video recently, too. And Doomba versus Fire Extinguisher. Yeah. My so, natural predator. Yep. Definitely check out all that stuff. It's pretty enjoyable content to see. So, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next review. Bye.